what we do is we record these. Make sure it's recording here. Um, and then they live on our Canyons U Bite Size PD website so people can access them in the future. Okay. Well, thank you so much for coming um, to Arts Integration Practices. Um, I'm Mindy Curtis. I'm with Canyons District Arts Specialist, along with Sherry Jorgensen. Sherry's not here today, but um, we work together as a team uh, in Canyons to support Arts K-12. And, and I invited uh, Jordan and Mindy Vandegraaff to be here. Do you guys want to introduce yourselves as well? Yeah. Uh, so my name is Jordan Nelson. I work at Midvale Elementary um, as a drama specialist. I also um, do a lot of things uh, with the BTS program um, as far as through the theater group. Um, so I get to meet a lot of great educators. So I'm excited to talk about integration. And I'm Mindy Vandergraaff. I am a visual art BTS teacher at Willow Springs Elementary. Um, this is my eighth year teaching at Willow Springs and my 12th year teaching in general. And I love art. Um, it's it's really exciting at our school. We're able to incorporate art with a lot. And so I'm excited to be here to talk about arts integration today. And uh, thank you, Mindy and Jordan, for being here. They're really experienced teachers who are doing wonderful integration and uh, art at their schools. And so we're really lucky to have them and have them share with us. Um, I'm recording. I did not forget. So we always talk about our professional development norms when we do professional developments in uh, instructional supports, but please be committed, responsible, respectful, and safe. I am not concerned that we won't be. Um, if you can mute your microphone um, and turn your camera on, if you're comfortable, um, you can type it in the chat, but also since we're so small, you can just jump in. Is there are any of you, if you have something to say, Jordan, Mindy, um, this can be, uh, I know it's being recorded so people can have access. So I do want to go through all the things, but uh, um, Sarah would really, really love to like ask, you know, answer any questions and really uh, connect to, to what you need. And we always do tie everything we do professional development wise to our MTSS framework. So um, arts integration is a, evidence-based uh, instructional priority for academics. And it does support behaviors as well because it's an engaging practice. Um, but we have a slide talking about the evidence that supports arts integration. So we'll talk about that. And also we're talking about teaming structures and continuous problem solving for improvement because arts integration um, can be a very collaborative experience at a school. And it takes a group of people to come up with the ideas often and to implement them. So all of those parts of our MTSS framework are being hit. So we're learning intention today, um, or learning to collaborate. That's, I think, our first thing to think about around a plan for implementing arts integration practices in arts and or core classrooms. So it goes both ways. We have arts teachers who are thinking about putting um, and how they can use arts to teach core classes, and also um, core classroom teachers, um, grade level teachers, wanting to use arts integration practices to teach their core subjects. So we're gonna define that, we're gonna discuss that a, a little bit, um, we're gonna identify the people who we can collaborate with, because um, that's an important part is we don't, we're not alone here and we have a lot of people who can support arts integration and um, ideally plan some next steps that are realistic and comfortable. And here's our, a little bit of our agenda, just half an hour PD. Um, what is arts integration? I think there's a lot of different definitions floating around there, nail it down um, of what that is. Why is it worth the time? A little research on that. Who are the people who can support? Where are the resources for it? Um, what are the next steps? And some uh, Mindy and, and we have some other teachers have provided some really wonderful examples of some realistic, wonderful, successful arts integration projects they've done. So we'll look at those. All right. Before we kind of go on to our into the agenda, is any any um, thing that 
Jordan or Mitty, you want to jump in or Sarah, specific things you're really wanting to be here today and get out of this discussion that we can make sure to add in. You guys good? Okay. Just don't want to just full steam ahead. If you guys have anything to say, feel free to jump in. Okay. So the definition, what is arts integration? So this is from the Kennedy Center. There's a few different really great resources. In Utah, we have the Beverly Taylor Sorensen Arts Program. Um, nationally, the Kennedy Center is a really great resource and they have a wonderful website. And their definition of arts integration is right here. Um, it's an approach to teaching in which students construct and demonstrate understanding through the art form. Um, and it's understanding of core content. So um, students engage in the creative process, which connects an art form to another subject area, and it meets both evolving objectives. So that's, we're really looking at having both a content, a science, an ELA, a social studies, a math objective, and an arts objective, be a visual art or music, theater, what have you. And we're learning both of them together. And we're aware of both skills being increased at the same time. Um, jump in, Jordan or Mitty, if you have anything to add to that. But that's what we want to think. I think a lot of people think of just arts and fusion or doing um, fun crafts, you know, sometimes. But we're really developing an art skill while we're developing um, core content knowledge or skill at the same time. Okay, leave a little gap so you guys can jump in because I know I can be a talker. So actually, Mindy, I'm gonna have you maybe introduce this a little bit. This is um, an example. So in the what, in the definition, so modeling is helpful in understanding what it is and what it looks like. So still as we define it, um, we're gonna watch this video, um, but Mindy's gonna talk about it because this is her teaching uh, with a co-teacher at Willow Spring. So Mindy, do you wanna talk about what we're gonna see? I do. So. Um... At my school, my sole purpose is to integrate arts, and and um, Mindy Curtis did a great job defining what that is using the Kennedy Center's definition. So really, our purpose, when the students enter my classroom, whether it's during boosters or outside of boosters times, and the example that you're going to see in this video is outside of our regular booster time, um, there I'm working to provide them with a lesson that is taking whatever they're working on in their regular classroom with their classroom teacher, and I'm going to use art to enhance it. So this is just, uh, this. the students stay in my room for an hour when they come. They come every other week for an hour. And I'll take one classroom teacher's class at a time. We rotate through the whole school. We've got a large school, so it takes us about two weeks to get through the entire school. But this is a second grade classroom. And they had, and this is this is how it works at our school. So I have opportunities to sit down and visit with the teachers, the classroom teachers at my school on a regular basis. And I will meet with them um, and I'll talk with them about what exactly they're learning in their classroom and what maybe their students need a little more practice with. So this particular teacher, um, I sat down with her and she said that her students had been learning about habitats and she wanted just a little more in-depth look at the parts of a habitat and components of a habitat. And so I was able to um, borrow some bat specimens from the Natural History Museum and then incorporated an art lesson um, into habitats with bats. And so this teacher gave me the vocabulary, the science goals that we need to work with, the standards that came out of SEED. I added the art components to it. We're using our visual art national and state standards with this. And then with input from her, we were able to put together a lesson and we're actually co-teaching this lesson. So you'll see that she's going to teach part of it and then I'll hop up and I'll teach part of it. And we'll kind of go back and forth and team teach as we go through this lesson. Um, at our school, we have opportunities to do this on Mondays. Um, I'm able to be here outside of our regular booster time, which gives me a chance to actually be in the classroom with the teacher at the same time, which is great. And, and so not every lesson at my school looks like this because obviously teachers are doing PLC meetings while I'm taking their kids during booster time. But this is, this is a fantastic example just to see of how it works where we teach together. So like I said, it's five minutes long and we'll just kind of dive in. Okay, I have to unmute so you guys can hear the sound. So I'm gonna do that. Hey, you today we're going to learn about bat habitat. Remember this special word, habitat? So, in our story, Baby Bears, we learned about how baby bears are like their parents, what they eat and where they live. Give me a thumb up if you remember that. Okay, so today we're going to learn about another mammal. Who can guess what it is? 
So what do you think it is? We're going to learn about what it eats and where it lives. Okay, so our vocabulary word we're listening for today is habitat. Ready? We're going to start with this word, so. Here we go. So that I can create my own model of a cat and that using paper, paint, and dry that shows my understanding. Your that would be different habitats. Some that's with space where the air is cool and damp. Okay, we're talking about habitat. Cave temperatures help bats stay cool in the summer and warm in the winter. Rock formations called stalactites and stalagmites in caves provide places for bats to hide. So if you'll look right here, we're going to create a model of a habitat today using our art skills. Ms. Densley, would you mind calling out the videos and see if we can come up with three ways that caves are good habitat? Hey, let's see. Ooh, our middle back table. Love the quiet hand raise. Ray, what do you think? What's one? Then go with the cage because it gets me so they don't um, die in the sun. Yeah. Ooh. Fair, what do you think? It's so cool for an animal because they can't see well. And that that's all that, so it's hard to see them. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they, they're able to hide in their habitat. Very nice. <laughs> Fantastic. All right, my friends. Well, we are going to go ahead and create our own habitat for our bats today. We're also going to take just a moment to look at some actual bats. I have a surprise for you. So in this box, I picked up for you some bats. The bats are not alive anymore. They are dead, but they are actual bats. Now I want you, as we look at these bats, there's a couple of things I want you to pay attention to. Um, remember, we talked, we learned a lot about bats and their characteristics. Because they're mammals, they have fur on their bodies. When you look at your bat, will you please try to find that fur? I also want you to look at their hand wings. I want you to see if you can see where those fingers are on their wings. We're going to trade between tables. So I'm going to put one box on each table. And then when I ring my bell, we'll trade with another table. So please be at your space. Thank you. Okay, fabulous art scientists. You had a chance to observe those bats and see those characteristics. Now let's learn a little bit more about their habitats and bats themselves by pulling some art into this. We are going to make a 3D model today. Take your hands in front of you, please. Remember when we make something in 3D, it's art that has height, it also has width, and it has depth. If you put your hands down, if you're going to make a cave today that has height, width, and depth, I'm going to give you a piece of folded paper. I folded it early for you before I think it's in your spot. Thanks. We are going to turn this folded paper into a cave habitat for our bedroom. Miss Densley is going to let you in here. She'll tell you when you're going to have a chance to make your bat fly. When you blow on that straw, your bat is going to take off flying, and you will have your habitat, your bat, and its nice furry winged body ready to take home with you and teach it to your family. <laughs> I'm gonna look at them fly. Tell me you. I should see you following this is B's direction. You have your 
All right. Thank you, Mindy, for showing us that. Anything you wanted to follow up on after that or point out specifically? Sorry, unmuting. <laughs> You're good. Um, just it, it, it's really nice to have the teacher come into the classroom. It really is fun. Like we are able to align habitats and adaptations. And you know what we're doing is the kids are having an opportunity to create a hands-on model. The nice thing, we're going to talk a little bit more in this presentation about some of the seed science goals, but science and art pair so nicely together because all of our seed standards will ask the students to create models. They ask them to create an actual, a working model or something that shows what they're trying to learn about. And and in art, that's what we do, right? We're creating models, we're creating, you know, sculptures and, and folding things out of paper. So you can see the, how well it pairs nicely. It's just, it's really great to see this work and come together, so. And Jordan, I know Jordan's a, a drama teacher as well. And I know ELA standards and social studies standards pair very, very nicely with, with theater um, as well. So there's certain standards and certain core content that pairs with certain art forms, particularly nicely. I will be honest that, math or science is a lot of fun and I do have a quick a quick example of the same kind of thing so we are in a garden habitat so this is called my bag of tricks so I bring it into my tiny kids and so they one of their friends is a plant and so we get to learn about props and seeds and actions with all of our um so it's a garden habitat that my little friends were doing and we were just talking, so they get to use about props. So that's a very theater based. They created a quick scene where their friend was the plant. And then of course we gave them, you know, oh, you didn't water it that day. And so it's just, even those simple little things using art, even just as a morning meeting, just those little things can be used too as simple integration. Awesome, that's a great example. Okay, I'm gonna go through the rest of it so we can get to more examples because the examples are the fun part. Oh no, I'm watching the video. That's not what I wanna do. Okay, just go to the next slide. Okay. So we're gonna to go to the why. And if we're here on this Zoom today, we are brought into the why, but there is a people who sometimes we have to um, advocate for or explain to the reason for teaching with arts integration. And I have quite a few um, examples on here, but this Kennedy Center website, again, I, I love to you so much. I also love the Beverly Taylor Sorensen stuff, but the Kennedy Center um, has links to really, really wonderful articles and it just kind of gives you a way to create your own why, um, but it gives you a lot of different uh, uh, research articles and research studies on using arts integration. And I'm not gonna go through all of them, but I also just want to put out the offer that um, I am a really great resource. I'm Mindy Curtis at, at the uh, district at, in instructional supports and I can um, help speak to people and talk through people um, of the benefits and give a lot of examples and connect them to people if we're ever wanting um, our why to be no more. But they make content, I'm just gonna go through this, this first one. It makes content more accessible um, for students. The arts are encouraged joyful active learning. Arts helps make students, um, lets them express personal connections help students understand and express abstract concepts. I know a lot of times when I'm working, I'm working with ELA teachers, um, specifically um, abstracting uh, and figurative language, they can see that thing and they can do it. Um, arts stimulate higher level thinking and they build community and help children develop collaborative work skills. So there's a lot of um, things that they can do and there's a lot of ways we can find the research to help us support arts integration. I'm not going to dwell on that too much because we're kind of getting to the end, and I know that we we agree. Um, but there is research ba based um, uh, backing us for for teaching with arts integration. So I really want to get to the who and the what. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Mindy. I was just going to say, Jordan, maybe you want to talk just a little bit about collaboration. I think it's I've had a chance to see some of the things that Jordan's done with theater, and it's amazing to watch the groups come together. Sorry. She's talking. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Yeah, so that's what I want to talk about is the who. So, so sorry, my, my sweeper was coming in. He's very sweet, but he was okay. cool vacuum for days. Yeah, just wait, just wait a minute. Um, who can collaborate and support? So at almost all of our schools, and we've at, at, at Park Lane, there is um, BTS, uh, Beverly Taylor Sorensen Art Specialist at the vast majority of our schools. And every school has an arts teacher, either music teacher, theater teacher, uh, dance teacher, or visual arts teacher. 
in all of our Canyon School District schools. And they're there to give you ideas and to collaborate. Um, so if you guys want to talk about that, I don't have to go through this whole list. I just got this list from the BTS website on things that they're supposed to do. But if you want to give some ideas of collaboration, that'd be wonderful. Um, how I think of it is a couple of tiers. Um, so there's a tier where you just are looking at the stand as an art teacher or core. You're just looking at the standards and seeing what you can mix on your own. Tier two, I think, is where we do start to collaborate. And it might be just a um, a checklist sometimes, just like, hey, <laughs> checklist. And I think that next tier that we're all trying to get to is where we're really coming together and trying to work back and forth like the bats. I think everyone's trying to get to that tier, but sometimes the other tiers are a great way to show uh, back and forth, I think, um, just what we can do. And that puts in that input, you know, it puts in that interest where it builds so you can get to that tier three and just have that um, hopefully that ability with most of your classes or grades, which I think is how I like to think about our tiers of integration or tiers of collaboration, if I, that's the word collaboration. Yeah, and, and even if most of our schools do not have a schedule in which the teachers can push in with one another, um, but if we're collaborating in a way that the core content teacher and the classroom teacher is teaching one element of it, and they have a lesson plan in which we're going now into art and teaching this other element of it and coming back and forth and then talking with each other before and after, um, those are really wonderful ways to do it as well. Anything else you guys want to talk about with collaboration? There's just lots of ways to do but that tier one, tier two, tier three. We have people saying that they give their BTS teacher access to their PLC notes so they can see what they're doing and talking about. And they can, even if they're not at their PLC, they can comment and jump in on those notes and then they can talk with them when they have time. So there's a lot of ways that teachers are collaborating. Um, also, I have me on here as a, or me and, and Sherry, but Sherry's retiring this year. So um, uh, CSD Arts Instructional Specialist um, and uh, and I'd like to, uh, we are the grant manager and we're also support as, as coaches. So we can support and, and come in and support a teacher or support a, uh, a school. And we can do training if uh, principals invite us in or teachers want us to come in and do some training at a, at a school. There's lots of things we can do. And we do have um, uh, our endowed chairs at uh, our universities. We work at the University of Utah. So those people, we can connect with them and they can come in. So we have a lot of people who can support arts integration at the school. But your first person line of contact um, is your uh, BTS specialist at your school. Um, so I'm going to just kind of talk about these. I'm not going to actually, there is links right here to places you can go for awesome lesson plans. I, I love the Kennedy Center, so I just put that at the top. And I can, I click into it so we can see that there's a really cool um, lesson plans in here that you can search um, by subject. And this is, this is what that website looks like. BTS has one that's really, really great. Um, these are really great links to just go in and see what people are doing. But Mindy um, and Lone Peak, our teachers at Lone Peak, have included some wonderful um, examples on lesson plans as well. And since we have five minutes left, I'm going to jump over to those. Um, so Willow Springs, um, Mindy, you have uh, included some examples from your uh, seed standards here. So do you wanna talk through these next slides? You can just tell me when to advance and I'll. Yeah, I'll just do it really fast. So I just wanted to give, as a classroom teacher, I just wanted to give you an idea of kind of just a visual representation of where you'd wanna start. If you wanna incorporate art more and in, you know, integrate art more into your own classroom. So just to see how it kind of works. So if you go to the first slide, mm -hmm. I just started with kindergarten. So this is, and then really I'm just focusing on science. Obviously we integrate with all the different subjects and, and you know, this is just an easy one to jump in on. So, so here's the example of the seed kindergarten um, standard, where it's just living things, plants and animals, and their surroundings. So then I'm going to pair that with a visual art goal, which is going to talk about color and tints. And so you can see some of the projects that we've done that fall under this category. The nice thing about the art is that it really does reach all students. Like I can get all kids involved. They're all excited to start creating something hands-on learning. It's like, it's really a great opportunity. So kindergarten, here's a great example of living things. We've got the plants and the animals and their surroundings. If we look at first grade and hopefully as a classroom teacher, you're able to look at this and kind of get some ideas. So maybe if you'll go to our next one. First grade, here's the next seed standard. So this one is going to be again, patterns on, but this time with plants and 
plant and animal parents and offspring. So that's our fish example here. We looked at line, shape, texture, and down at the bottom, we need to, and this is what I was talking about, is that science pairs so nicely with visual art because they want you to create models and create designs. Here's the students created their own um, sundial. And then we were able to go and out and measure daylight with it. This is arts integration where we're creating something, we're creating a model of something. We talked about warm and cool colors before creating this. So hopefully this will kind of give some ideas. So if we go to the next slide, second grade, here's some more science to look at. They're asked to develop and use models of landforms. So we use salt dough. Our art goal was to learn about shape, form, and sculpture. So as the students came into the classroom, we talked about different landforms, types, arches, valleys, canyons, and then they were able to paint it and create their own model of it. So as you kind of look at these, kind of be thinking of your own classroom and standards of things that you could do. So third grade, we're talking about Habitats, how organisms can survive with adaptations. So they designed a creature. They we did dragons. It was around the time of Chinese New Year, but we talked about dragons with this one. And then they had to, they were given an environment and they had to create a dragon with adaptations that would survive in that environment. And that's how we assess their understanding. We talked about paper folding techniques. And you can see how the visual art pairs with the with the classroom seed goal. Okay, if we go to the next one, fourth grade. This one we talked about waves, and we do waves as in wavelength from the sun. So we can measure wavelengths through cyanotype paper, which is sun reflective paper. The students looked at Utah plants and drew their own and then took it out. And we looked at the way the sunlight, the sun waves react with the paper. And then our last one, fifth grade, um, I've put a couple on here. So the first one was to, to create a model of uh, basically a food chain, matter among plants, animals, decomposers. And so you can see the paper food chain model up above. And then this bottom one was on um, mixing mixture of chemicals and different things. So we combine substances to create our paint pores when we mix the oil with the paint on the tiles to see how they would react. So there's just so many ways you can do it. And I, again, as a classroom teacher, I would say utilize your art specialist in your classroom. BTS teachers are specialized in their field. I know, um, you know, Jordan and I, a lot with our, with our arts backgrounds, this is what we're good at. This is, this is, we've got the teaching and we've got the arts with it. So as a classroom teacher, utilize your arts specialist. They will totally help you with things, but you can see how nicely it'll pair together when you start thinking of how can I help the kids better learn the standards through something hands-on and art related. I love that. Those are amazing examples. Thank you so much for including those. Um, and I just wanted to, uh, we're not going to watch this right now, but there's a bunch more examples um, on this. If you go into the slides, which will be, will be shared um, on our Can You Do Bite Size PD page. Um, you can click on this YouTube video. And there's also a TikTok channel, Full Steam Ahead, um, our Lone Peak Elementary team. There's a visual arts teacher and a drama teacher there. And they have this video with a bunch of really, really wonderful examples that they do at their school as well. And it's really cute to watch. Oh, oh, welcome to full steam ahead. There we go. Anyway, see how cute it is. It's going to be great. Okay. So um, we're at time right now, but so I'm going to go ahead and, and stop our recording. Um, uh, but I do, I'm actually going to just go to this slide so you can see the people we could reach out to, the people who are here. And I'm going to stop our official recording. Let's see here. How do I do that? There we go. Um, stop.